everyone, one big boss here, and we are back with another new to retro review. Also, we are kicking off Resident Evil Month finally. Okay, so it's the 14th, but still, I'm gonna try very hard to squeeze as many reviews in as possible as I can. Uh, we've only got a few weeks left, and there's a couple of other games coming out uh, this month that I'd like to get to. Well, later on. So, uh, but yeah, like I said, this is gonna be a month long tribute to Resident Evil games, so I got some guest hosts who are gonna review their own personal favorite Resident Evil games as well. So, without further ado, let's get this started with our first review. Episode 18, Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles for the Nintendo Wii. Released on November 17, 2009, in America, and developed by Capcom and Kavia, Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles was the sequel to The Umbrella Chronicles released two years prior. It was bundled with the Wii Zapper and of course you know that I got it. Producer Masakichiya Kawada wanted to retell the series in a different way than The Umbrella Chronicles did. Focusing on the characters and to talk about scenarios that were not in the previous installment. Kawada tried his best to bring back horror into the series so he decided to use the camera shaking angle. I guess that was okay. I mean, he wanted to he wanted the players to feel like they were actually in the game running from zombies, being attacked like right here with William Burke. I mean, like the screen shaking all the time. You actually feel like you're in it. You know, he just didn't want it like a standard, you know, Umbrella Chronicles or House of the Dead feel, you know, where you just the the camera's in one fixed position and never moving. Which uh, you know, I thought that was a pretty good idea. In the end, you know, Kawada was very pleased with what he saw in the final project, only wishing that the Wii was able to support HD to bring out the true horror. Of course, he's getting his wish now, because now that it's 2012, the game is coming to the PS3 in June, and he must be very, very happy about that. The year is 2002, and the American agent Leon S. Kennedy is ordered by the President of the United States to find a drug lord named Javier Hidalgo, who was in contact with Umbrella recently, or so the reports have said. The game is a prequel to the events of Resident Evil 4, as Leon teams up with Jack Krauser for the first time and their history is explored of what happened between them before the events of Resident Evil 4. During the events of Operation Javier, Krauser wants to know everything Leon does about his battle with the B.O.W.s and how he got involved with it all in the first place. Leon retells the events of Resident Evil 2 and how he first got involved in the fight against Umbrella and the deadly bioweapons they created, and the ones he encountered in Raccoon City, on his first and only day as a cop. Later on into the mission, the two discover a familiar virus was being used in South America, and the creatures they began to encounter were being controlled. They weren't mindless, flesh-eating beasts that Leon had encountered before in Raccoon City. Leon begins to tell Krauser the events that Claire and Chris Redfield encountered on Rockford Island and in the Antarctic, three months after the destruction of Raccoon City, and just what the virus was that almost was released upon the world by Alexia Ashford, as well as the man working in the shadows which began to pique Krauser's interest and also had a pretty good turning point of why, you know, Krauser became who he was in Resident Evil 4. Uh, there's also a separate uh, mission that you unlock later on in the game where you play through the events of Operation Javier again, but you hear Krauser's thoughts and everything and see how he changes. Like, while he doesn't say anything out in the open, he thinks everything internally, so you see what leads up to his uh, sort of sort of his defection and where, why he becomes uh, who he is in Resident Evil 4. Gameplay for this game hasn't changed up... Uh, well, it's been slightly changed from its previous installment. They say headshots are much easier to obtain in this game, but I disagree on this, but more on that later. Also, you cannot move freely around on the screen as you did in the Umbrella Chronicles. Uh, the screen moves for you to add the more realistic horror feel that you are actually the character. Everything. You also don't see your own character except when he or she is reloading a gun, uh, but you do see your partner who actually helps out and shoots other enemies. Um, at times I feel like they're just there and they really don't hit the mark they're supposed to, but sometimes they do help in a pinch. I've just known that when I get killed most of the time, my partner's never shooting. But I've had, I've had, had them cover some uh, close calls for me before. The difficult for this game was upgraded too. Uh, easy mode is, as it says, it's pretty easy, um, but anything after easy mode is pretty much a challenge. Even with the upgraded weapons, it's still going to be a tough fight. And that's what I like in this game. I, I was really glad they decided to do something like that, because it really adds uh, to the horror feeling of this game and everything. Even if you use a shotgun and you shoot a boss and everything like that, they're still going to keep coming for you. 
You still shake the controller to reload and are able to swap out weapons at any time, which, you know, can be a lifesaver at times, uh, because, you know, in, in this game, when you're switching between weapons or anything, it can mean life or death, because you can be using the bow gun one minute and then, like, have to quickly switch to, like, the shotgun, which, primarily, the shotgun always stays in my inventory, which saved me on multiple occasions. Uh, the game scenarios and chapters seem a lot longer than the previous game, which is kind of a good thing, but I feel at times that, like, when you get killed, like, just here, and everything, and they make you start over, it just takes, uh, just takes a really long time to get back into the groove of things. It seems like they send you back all the way to the beginning of the level, and that's the only thing that really frustrates me at times, is, is the length of it. What's wrong? Okay, now it's time for everyone's favorite part. I hate to dish out the bad news, but it's gotta be done. So what can I say about the Dark Side Chronicles that's bad? What could I hate about this game? Well, for starters, I understand Kawada's desire and vision to recreate pure horror and bring you into the actual game, but the whole camera shaking idea would have worked better if we were allowed to choose this option or to have it as a fixed camera view, you know? To me, that would have been a little better. Another problem I had with this uh, was the headshots. Now they say that it's easier in this game, but I feel that in Umbrella Chronicles, it was way easier. Dark Side Chronicles, it's hard to get the headshots because I've noticed that I've lined up my shots perfectly like, the, like they were in the old game. And I'd hit the head and I didn't get anything. They'd still keep coming after me. So, uh, but this time around, I've noticed that you have to, to get a headshot in Dark Side Chronicles, you must, like, shoot the corner of their heads and when the little uh, crosshairs start blinking, that's when you fire. To me, that doesn't seem to be a headshot. It's like a corner headshot. Headshot's like, boom, dead center. Okay, and my final complaint for this game is the lack of online play. Again, something I was very disgruntled about because this game would have been amazing to play online with friends and other people around the world. You know, I didn't really expect it at first with the Umbrella Chronicles since it was the first one in the series, but since, you know, they tried to make this game bigger and badder than the, uh, than the previous one, they should have added online play. It would have added a whole new retrospect to people because, like I said in, in previous reviews, online play is important. Uh, you can make a great game. But if you also want to throw in online play, that wouldn't be too bad either. Um, it's just, I had a lot of friends who've either moved away, they're in the military and stuff, but they all have like a Wii or a PlayStation or something like that, you know, they have access to these things. You'd like to be able to play with your friends, you know, online. And, I mean, honestly though, the co-op does work pretty well in this. It is fun to play with your friends, you know, side by side. But, you know, sometimes you just, you know, you want to hop online and wish for the better, you know? I mean, there's probably not going to be another Chronicle series, and I don't know if the PlayStation 3 HD collection will actually have uh, online play. All I know is for now that it supports the PlayStation Move and in the end it probably will have trophies. That's about all I know for now. But as amazing as this game was, online play wouldn't have been a bad thing to add to it at all. Okay, enough with the bad. Let's get to why this game is just so freaking awesome. First off, you get to revisit the stories of Resident Evil 2 and Code Veronica, something we didn't get in the Umbrella Chronicles. It was interesting uh, the way they retold the story. I mean, you know, I know a lot of people were like, oh, well, it's not like this, it shouldn't be like that. No, they're, they're not supposed to be together. It, you know, it's whatever, you know. And, I mean, they did a good job with the Resident Evil 2 story. It was a, it was a little different than what we've uh, experienced before, but I still think that they did a pretty good job with it. Uh, the Code Veronica one was nice. I mean, Wesker made sporadic appearances. The game really wasn't about him, yet they made it so that he was known. He kept to the shadows, just like he's done throughout the whole series where people thought he was dead. Quote, unquote. <laughs> but, um, yeah, honestly, I mean, if I had to say, like, I wish they could have added a mode where Wesker fought Alexia like he did in Code Veronica, but, you know, everything else worked out perfectly. Even, like, the way that Alexia kills Alfred here and everything, I mean... You know, of course, that was done differently, but it's whatever. It's still, it's still well told in the end. Honestly, it it ties together pretty nicely. Not much is left unanswered, like it was in Umbrella Chronicles, where certain characters were missing and the story seemed rushed. This one felt more complete in some ways. Second off, the weapon upgrades are even better now in this game. You can customize any part of the weapon you choose, where you can just focus on upgrading the firepower of the gun, or the reload speed, or even the capacity. You know. It just, uh, it, it's pretty better that way. Uh, before, you were only able to upgrade certain parts at certain times. Granted, it takes a lot of money to upgrade these things, but that's what counts in this game. This is what's going to keep you going back and forth, playing levels over and over. It keeps the replay value high in order to unlock these massive powered uh, weapons. 
and the replay value for this game is extremely high. It's going to take much time, like I said, to upgrade all your weapons and unlock all the features in the game, much like the hidden voice messages, which, you know, like some of like the ones right here, it explains Jack Krauser and uh, meeting up with Leon almost for the first time, how he gets to where he's going. I haven't unlocked all the sound things yet, and I'd really like to because I'd like to find out more. But there's also a really interesting one that I heard before uh, where Annette calls Sherry and everything, telling her about what's going on, how she had to run to the police station, and uh, it was pretty... It was really well done, and I actually like that little background, because like, you never knew anything before when you played the original Resident Evil 2. You just heard that Sherry was supposed to go to the police station in the end. And there's also other things to unlock, too, like character profiles and everything like that. Uh, you know, actual files and everything like that that you can read, like, you know, finding, like, journals and everything. So it's pretty cool. There's also um, costumes to unlock, which are pretty cool as well. I actually always use the alternate costumes uh, a lot, as you've seen throughout the... the gameplay of this review so yeah like i said um the difficulty is pretty good too because the heart the higher it goes you know obviously the harder it gets and it never feels like it's in a way that it's cheap it feels in a way that like it seems perfect the perfect difficulty raise kind of like if you've ever played ninja gaiden for the xbox you'll understand how the difficulty should work you know and just going back and playing these things it never it just never feels old at all We're not gonna hurt We're the ones so is the dark side chronicles game for you well, if you enjoy rail shooters from arcades, then yeah. And if you don't think it is, you know, don't forget you can compete in the online leaderboards. I mean, I was ranked number one in the world for a while. And, you know, I mean, it's been a while since I played it, so I went back and checked. And yeah, I've been knocked down to number seven. But hell, that's not bad, you know. Uh, but seriously, for, for a dark, well-retelling story, plenty of action and replay value, even if you aren't a fan of the series, pick up the game. Because, honestly... This game has everything, and if you're worried about like not being able to follow the whole story of the game, it's retold pretty well. Though it's kind of cut up, it still fits together, and it's a nice little bundle. And if you don't want to get it for the Wii, or you don't have a Wii but you want to get the game, just wait until June, because we are getting the HD Chronicles uh, that month, which will be good. It'll be PlayStation Move compatible, so you'll be able to experience this in true HD, which is what Kawada always wanted, and now he's getting his wish. Uh, America will unfortunately not get a disc-based game with this. We will be getting DLC only, while Japan will be getting a disc. I mean, like I said, I'm not really a fan of DLC. I'm a collector. I would like a disc. So, probably in the future, I'll, for the hell of it, just buy the Japanese uh, HD Chronicle games for the hell of it, you know? But honestly, go out and buy this, because if you love arcade shooters and everything, you like zombies, I guarantee that you, this is one game that you'll never get bored of. Alright everyone, well that does it for another new 2 Retro Review. Hope you all enjoyed it. So tweet us a message on Twitter or follow us on Facebook to keep up with our studio activity and everything else in the world of video games. Please subscribe to our channel too because it's free and in this day and age, free is a damn good thing. So next week, episode 19, we will head back for yet another Wii title, a port of probably one of the best Resident Evil games ever. Although not in my opinion. But we will take a look at Resident Evil 4, the Wii edition for... Well, the Nintendo Wii. And a good friend of mine, Acid Arthur, will be stopping by to review this since this was the first Wii game she ever owned. And honestly, I listened to her play hours and hours of the game, and it was pure comedy. She kept screaming and swearing, and, and she's a Buddhist. She's not supposed to be swearing all the time and stuff like that, but this game just brought out the worst in her. Whether it was Krauser or... Well, actually, it was the it was the Chainsaw Ladies that made her really just, like, tear her hair out and stuff, but... It was great. It was it was it was hilarious, and I think that she's better suited to do this review than me. Since I mean, I love Resident Evil 4, but I don't consider it the best one in the series. But always, like I said, you know, uh, I'm glad you all enjoyed this, and I hope you join us next time. So until then, I will see you all next time. <laughs>